Hey. Welcome. Let's see if we can line up that shot. Hi. Welcome. So, finally we get to start building like an app in Phoenix, I guess. Um, as per usual, this stream is sponsored by the good people at Tigris. And um, if all goes well, we will be pulling the data we work with from Tigris. And I say if all goes well, because we ran into some problems last time when we were dealing with this. Uh, but I think Herman, who we had in the chat then, I think Verschoten, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, doubtful, but close maybe. I actually first met Herman um, on my first sort of community event, which I believe was ElixirConf EU in Prague in like 2018, so just before the pandemic. And uh, he was one of the people that joined me when I said, hey, nerves people, we want to meet up during the conference. I want to talk to some nerves people. He was one of them. Uh, he does a bunch of work with nerves. And apparently he solves my problems while I'm on stream or shortly after I'm on stream. Uh, so he helped me troubleshoot while we were on stream and then he fixed it after. So I think the first thing we should do is try Herman's fix to the thing we tried to do last time. Let me know that audio is coming through well enough and all that. But since people have been saying nice things about the music, I assume the audio is coming through. So we are trying to use, um, what's the name of this extension? It's SQL, uh, oh, it's called something weird. Uh, SQLite 3 VFS HTTP, of course. Thank you, Tom. I'm glad the audio is coming through. Welcome, Francois. Uh, it is quite all right to be a confused TypeScript and Rust dev. Uh, as a Rust dev, I believe confusion must be a very, very uh, normal state for you. Um, Rust is much, much more complex than uh, what we'll be dealing with in Elixir most of the time. I've poked at Rust. Uh, I enjoyed it. I think it could be a good language for me, but I didn't have enough excuse to spend proper time with it. But I want to see if Herman's fix works for us. I think it should. So let's open the code project. So this is the GitHub issue. Um, as I assumed during the stream, Matthew jumped in, um, worked on it. But there, there's some stuff which makes it not work well with the ecto stuff but it should work fine if we use executelite in the raw way first let's wipe away uh executelite because we played a fair bit with that last time so it might be kind of broken uh let's see and graph uh sqlite yes this I need. So the bucket is public. If anyone wants to pull the podcast index DB from my bucket or use SQLite to play with it. Um, so we have our own DB module. We can just modify that. So in honor. Let's uh, call the function Herman. Uh, questions are always welcome in the chat as we go. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Just let me know what you're wondering about. And you can chat about kind of whatever. This is a Phoenix project, so it's set up to be a Phoenix project already. But um, the first thing we'll do is to get this database stuff working. Mm, I don't keep my stuff in Herman for some reason. Maybe I should. Um, so slash, 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 
SQLite, HTTP, no, 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 SQLite 3 HTTP extension. That's the path where the thing lives. So let's do it this way. Um, and hmm, we can do a bit of bug life here and just do the path expand dot dot slash I think this should get us the string we need No, that order, yes. And then we're trying to, so what we do here, um, we open it first in mem, we open a memory database first, then we enable loading extensions, then we load this extension with a specific call, and then we open um, fake database specifically saying we want the BFS and because we have exported this and the var it should use that to connect to the bucket and pull our podcasts from there that's the idea So I have a bunch of things I want us to start uh, the work towards during this stream. So I want to build a podcasting, podcast related application that kind of pulls a bunch of podcasting data. So we have some kind of data to work with and then we can do explore a bunch of different things like um, things we can do with live view, data processing in Elixir, uh, of course, utilize our bucket a bunch. So yeah, look, Christianity, questions and answers. We got the thing working. So now we can actually use this uh, to pull podcast data uh, that we want. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you, Herman, for that one. Now let's let's tidy this up a little bit. Um, so if this is our database module that we actually want to use, um, we might as well do bucket URL. Hmm. I don't. Know, I'm not sure if. So in Elixir we have system put env, but I'm not sure that would go outside of our application. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've never done that. Let's let, let's leave the um, the env var. As it is, but then, yeah, essentially this will all be the same. And after we've opened that, we just return this. So this can probably be a gen server because we only want to run one of these. 
uh, is my thinking. It shouldn't be dangerous to run more of them, but that's what I have in mind at least. So let's make a gen server. Now, if you don't know Elixir and Erlang, uh, gen servers are the actors in the Erlang actor model. Um, they're not actors though. We'll do global registration, which is not always ideal, but it's fine for this case. Makes it a singleton for this node, but that doesn't bother me at all. Um, right now I don't have any need for the options. Well, actually I want the, this thing. server is a single process that can take mess receive messages send messages and that's pretty much all it does um, so this one we'll do this in okay com we will build up a state variable here and now we can hold just that that and then let's implement a handle call function query query and because it's like a prepared statement I think we can we can do cool things with it but we don't have to I'll just do them kind of rough for now. Um, as I said, any questions are quite welcome. So what did we get them? What shape did we get them in? We got them as rows. We did not get the <laughs> We didn't get what the actual rows were symbolic of, which is a nice, neat little thing. Uh, we didn't get the um, fields, is what we didn't get. So I guess that's a thing. Actually, we can check. It might be that there's something we can call to get that. So prepare, execute, prepare, execute. <clears throat> so we can do the nice prepared statement approach here. Uh, we're kind of not doing that right now. Um, is Herman used SQL like three fetch all. Yeah, you can get columns separately. Cool, cool, because that's useful. Um, so let's uh, build up a query and uh, do something fun with that. So 
We want to do these. But instead of this, we do this one. And I'm aware I will be opening myself to SQL injection by not doing proper prepares and executes. I can do that later if I feel like it, but also maybe Matthew just fixes Ecto and I don't need to do any of that. It's good and bad. You know? um, so we should be able to do execute light SQLite columns. stream behavior in Elixir. Otherwise, this will load all results and return them, which may be inefficient. It's a good question, Punica. So, for one thing, there is a stream behavior in SQLite. So this is a massive, it's a four gig uh, SQLite file. But as long as we're not trying to order anything or do group by or anything kind of that requires the whole data set. We can ask questions which will only access the rows it actually needs to answer our questions. And that will be an efficiency on with XQLite and the, um, the VFS layer. Um, so in this case, we don't need a particular stream behavior to make this reasonably efficient. It's more about which questions we ask. We can absolutely ask questions that could be very, very slow. Um, we should avoid doing that. So now I just want a nicer query function. So then I do join server call and I do a podstream.db. And this is the hellish convenience of just um, of naming your thing like it's a singleton, um, even when it isn't. So now we should be able to add podstream.db to our version tree. And this is a default generated Phoenix application with the uh, database stuff commented out. So um, yes, with SQLite, you can absolutely step. Um, I think we did that last time a little bit. So you can make a statement and then you can say step, which I believe will fetch like a single row or something I, I don't I haven't worked with the underpinnings of this so much um, but I do believe you can work with uh, um, with a database cursor especially if you're doing the Postgres thing like SQLite is a little bit of a special uh, special variant but so if you're using Postgrex, you start the thing. Well, they have a pretty high level API as well. Queries. Not sure if they do the, the cursor thing. Um, but yeah, if you do retrieve millions of rows, you would have to load them into memory. I haven't looked for a streaming variant. Usually it's not a good idea to load millions of rows at one time, but I think there, I think there are streams. Um, 
actually let's check echo stream and i think there is i haven't worked much with that but i seem to recall them existing Returns a lazy innumerable that emits all entries from the data store matching the given query. So yes, this way you would do do it lazy, lazily. Um, exactly how they do it under the hood might vary a bit depending on your database implementation. But I don't plan on loading millions at a time. I will simply uh, page my way through them if I need to. That's my plan. Um, but it's a fair question. I'll stream db query. Oh, I didn't know we started this. Um, let's see if our pod stream thing starts. It did not because something was wrong. Oh, <laughs> yes, that would do it. Select ID title URL from <coughs> podcasts uh, where category one equals tip. Well, I think technology. So category limit ten. Do that one. No match right now. Learn value error here. Dot dot blah blah blah. Okay, we can just check the um, schema locally if I remember where I keep this file. Dallas, not Dallas D. Uh, inappropriate. Oh, where do I keep this file? I don't remember. Actually, the podcast index. know there are categories come on okay let's just do now let's fetch with the asterisk and we should see all the columns because I did ask it to output the columns so here oh no underscore Timeout. That's a good one. And then the data is still output because it just took a little bit longer. Um, but this query timeout. So let's see. Then the server call, I think, just takes the timeout directly after. And I don't mind if they take a little bit because it's a very remote server. Now it's locally cached, probably. We have these. We have these. Microsoft Power User. Okay. Didn't know that was a thing. Um, so we want to. Uh, 
turn these into some nicer maps. That's what I want to do at least. So for every row, we can do enum.map. We have a single row. And we can do enum.zip. So we zip the columns with the row, which should give us just to get very pipeline-y. Um, so that will give us key and value. Uh, we know that this is a limited set of keys, so we could uh, feasibly turn them into atoms. That's um, something you might want to watch out for, or that you do want to watch out for. Uh, it can be dangerous to turn strings into atoms, in Erlang and Elixir. Um, they are essentially enums and there's a limit to how many you can have so you shouldn't take user generated content for that. But if the podcast index wants to have millions of fields just to screw with me and I sometimes update my database without noticing that, I'm okay with that happening. So let's make nice, let's do columns and string to atom. So that should mean we have atoms. And we can turn these zip rows into a map. Now our rows should be just looks like something like entries. So Restart that. Let's see if I got it in one. Query takes a bit of time. Longer than I would have expected, but yeah. Uh, we get this, which is nice. Now, ideally, <laughs> One would like to have the podcasts that are most recently updated uh, first. But if we order, if we try to sort this uh, data set at all, that means we need to fetch all of the data set, which kind of offsets the upside of having it in uh, a remote bucket. Like if we're working off of a local file sure but then we would have to ha uh, have that four gig file locally everywhere so that's not um but yeah let's let's move forward a bit uh, right now i don't need any of that so we can expand the editor okay do this so I can actually see my file listing. Uh, it's behind the camera, it's, it's behind you. My file listing is behind you. Actually, I can just drag that off, I think, to the other side, and then I don't have that problem. Fair enough. Um, but let's make file for podcasts left module pod stream podcast and what I want this to do is to give us some nice ways to to fetch these um, so we'll probably want a constant for which the fields we want to fetch by default So that's ID, it's title, it's URL. So that's the feed URL, which is very good and important. Um, we actually, we have the full set up here somewhere. There it is.
There we go. <clears throat> Uh, but if I take these and just there, uh, it's nicer. Unscrew this pickle. There. <laughs> uh, my format on save is all broken half the time. I'm working on some weird projects which, which really screws up my dev tools. So, looking at the more closely at these, I think. So, let's split this so we can build up. So I want ID, I want title. Something I'm curious to ask the database and this might take a while to get a response for. Um, select distinct um, category one from podcasts from the 10. Thousand, which categories are we dealing with that exist at least as category one? Um, last update feels relevant. Yeah, okay, that took longer. That's fair. Um, let's fix that. So we can actually make calls that take more time. Um, have a minute. No? Oh, recompile. Tsk, tsk. Oh, I, this file is broken still. Gotta fix that. No, it's probably fine. No, it's fine. And as we go, questions always welcome. Um, so now that one can go off and do that while we look at, so it's just like dead seems like a thing I want to filter on. Uh, default filters. So if we look at this, the feed has sent too many errors, it should not be checked anymore. I think that would be dead equals zero, because I think that's how they're doing booleans. Hmm. Let's do episode count where episode count is more than five. Or we just skip that. Like there's popularity score and stuff, but I kind of like just pulling all of them because it gets, some podcasts are very silly and it's kind of fun. Um, let's pull the description as well. Newest enclosure duration. So that's how long the most recently seen um, one is. <coughs> so let's pull category one, category two, and category three, but let's not bother beyond that. Um, And I want to do um, or category two equals technology. I'm gonna be focusing on technology podcasts for the beginning of this at least. Um, and 
fetch set um, offset limit. So the query should be select uh, fields equals default fields. We can do these in a map <coughs> and we just run inspect on them that will turn them into a string. I could also run to string, I think. Is there an atom to string to be specific? Yes, yes, there is. So we run all of them atom to string and then join. Um, we join them together. This is how we build queries. This is how we did it back in my old days. Um, here's the default filters. Num join. Hey, Thunder Deer. Welcome to the stream. We're building queries like in the olden times. Uh, yeah, so I essentially just want to join all of these with ants. And then it's limit. Almost protecting against SQL injection, but not really. Punish cards, very close, very close. Um, not entirely, but close. Podstream, the podcasts. Oh, let's compile first. Recompile. Podstream, the podcasts. Fetch set. So we want the first hundred or some ah what did i do wrong oh defaults uh default filters known fields that was never used that's fine variable query is unused that seems bad we build the query, but we never run it. Who wants to run a query? That seems lame. Um, let's at least give it 30 seconds to execute uh, as a general rule. Shouldn't need it. Depending a little bit on how well these filters work, because it's gonna have to go through a bunch of um, rows to find only technology um, podcasts that fit the criteria. Undead technology podcasts. That took a little time. Let's simplify just primary category technology. That's probably faster just want to find the first hundred technology podcasts it's, it's fine you don't have to just stop compiling it you're no good at it um I'm surprised it takes that long. All right. Let's just find the first technology podcast. Now, if I've spelled something poorly or anything like that. Actually, did we get an answer to 
popular categories. I don't think we did, right? I think I waited for that. So that would still be useful. Okay. It's a little bit slower than I would have expected, which is worth thinking about. Oh, now I want to do something like this. I was almost, well, this is actually a problem. So I want to, so I'm going to do a sub query, which I think will help. So I select category one from podcasts and limit that to the first thousand. And then I want to select the distinct categories of those. Which should be significantly faster than I did pick a thousand. I could have just a smaller number. Just try the idea. Didn't have to go with a thousand. Let's try a lower number because I don't like waiting. So among the first 10, we get these. Among the first 100, that's still fairly straightforward. And technology is in there. Now, so we might want to do something quite similar here. Because let's see, what does this mean for streaming from a bucket? Doesn't matter if that we're selecting fields. I mean, this, this should happen. Um, so we know there was technology in the first 100. So, but it might have been dead. There might be a lot of dead podcasts. Let's try without dead. What's, what's wrong now? Client is alive. That's that's good. Um. Okay, so now we're dealing with a syntax error. That's more surprising. Apple coding. Not dead. Many episodes. Um, we could also absolutely fetch. Let's see, oh, this still happens. But if we do this, then. It's kind of funny. Um, so if we just remove the filters, it would be significantly faster. So ID 39, that's the first one. 46, 52, 64, 170, and then it's like 318. So these are fairly spread out. It might be faster to just pull like 10,000 and then filter those. If you're hearing a car, that's because my wife is starting the car. Um, I should probably shut the garage door. I've shut the door to this uh, office. But let's see. If we just want to fetch the first thousand ones, how much time does that take? 
So now I'm experimenting a fair bit. I just want to figure out what we can do easily and what will screw with us because it's a little bit slower than I would have hoped to do it this way. Um, which is probably, um, probably a VFS issue. Because if we then check just do T um, well. columns rows so I'm gonna add a timing thing because I don't like not knowing the time this takes Debug full um, extra right query tech. And because that's in the gen server, I need to restart. Debug logging for this query any day now. A thousand is taking so much time. Okay, let's try it. Let's try incrementally here. One explosion. Oh, right, I didn't do the thing I intended. Columns, rows. Are you not checking my work? Am I supposed to do that myself? Cruel. 771. And this one is working locally. Now, 10. That one has to have also have been local. No, 300. Twitter smarter podcast with Madeline Sklar, the best Twitter tip from Pro hell of a title. Four seconds. So, 200. <clears throat> now I'm starting to wonder if there is a streaming uh, thing we could do. Five hundred. Like the fetch speed is not super important because we can always, um, well, it's essentially a bulk operation. So, um, something that's fun to do is to deal with below and to use flow um, which is an elixir library I, I rather like okay can I move this whole thing I, I know I can I just don't remember how 
to the bar position. Uh, there we go. Um, so this can use gen stage and do a bunch of nice streaming operations. It's a little bit tricky how you work it well uh, sometimes. But you can do some really nice things. Um, so if you want to do a data stream and you want to pull those from something just uh, flow plus gen, gen stage will let you do that fairly easily. I think this is a bit of rabbit hole, so I don't think we need to do it right now. Um, yeah, we'll probably hold off on that. But what's a good next step? I think a next step is pulling these podcasts and just shoving them into a better storage solution. Because we, when we found podcasts that are of the categories we want, we want to easily be able to revisit their, their data, ideally without needing to query this particular massive database again. Um, Previously, we have done this, which I can steal. Um, started building out like a Tigris library, which made it kind of easy to be uh, using, to, to call uh, the Tigris API, which is an SV compatible. I'll just shove it in here as tigris.ex. This should be a library at some point, but who has time for that? Um, now I just need to manage a secret or two. I won't be showing you that part. intend for this to be on the private bucket really so I just need to bring out some of the secrets of squirreled away Let's see doing things off screen right now because I don't want to give you all my keys. It's not that I don't trust you, it's that I shouldn't trust you. Besides, I should go shut that door before my wife comes back to the car and goes Brrr, again. Mm. So now I can do the source.
Hold on. What? Okay, there's some garbage left in that file, I guess. Fixing. Apologies for the wait. I don't know what it's complaining about. Seems correct to me. Oh, there's too many wiggles. That makes more sense. Cool. So let's make a small gen server whose job it is to just continuously download these and put them elsewhere. <clears throat> This is not sort of how most Phoenix and Alexa projects start with writing like two gen servers. It's how most of mine do, but that's because I like to write gen servers uh, and because I do a lot of experimentation. So a lot more normal, regular <laughs> um, work is usually done with, when you're dealing with um, Phoenix and Elixir, you just writing your controllers and doing regular web dev, but that's not what we're doing right now. So, um, but we'll start at an offset of zero. Um, we'll continue to fetch. And when it does fetch that uh, stream of podcasts dot fetch set state offset. Oh yeah, I can do um, limit let's do 10 keep it snappy so uh, so I want this to be entries and Then we can do very basic upload. So um, store entry. So I think we'll actually switch to fetching the entire data set. Just all fields so this is currently deprecated it didn't last long and then we do tigris put um store entry so the entry prefix can be podstream 
entry. Then it's uh, add entry prefix. Well, let's do hot join for that. We want an entry prefix and then we want entry.id.json because I'm going to turn these into JSON for now. Um, so I think this would be it, unless I've forgotten something about how my Tigger stuff works. No, that seems right. Um, let's log what we're doing so that we can look at it later. log the key and so this pod fetcher should do enum that each each entry well I'll just do the shorthand because that's the kind of nice API we've accidentally made. So <clears throat> So we fetched uh, offset we fetched podcasts. from state that offset up to state that limit and now we just need to update the offset so that we keep moving forward hey ryan uh i am working on fetching podcast and <laughs> podcast metadata uh from a sqlite database that is on an object storage um, service and right now I'm building a gen server and that gen server should um, be stepping through uh, slices of this data and storing the full entries in um, in another spot in the object storage. That's the big idea. And then it should just keep doing fetch forever. It's gonna make fetch happen. Is that how you, go, you do it? Oh, right, I haven't added the dependencies for uh, for this whole thing. So it wants these. So these are dependencies to talk to a S3 API. 
we do 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 do? There we go. And if you have any further questions about what we're up to, uh, feel free to ask more. Surprise didn't need to compile XQLite again. Don't think anything changed with that one, but okay. Maybe there's some support that was changed. Might have an optional dependency or something that it can use. You must require a logger before. All right, pod fetcher will fail to log properly because of this. Uh, Hugues, uh, it is assuming a lot that I am looking to have something that has a massive advantage over Postgres. That is not necessarily the point in this case. Uh, the data set came as a SQLite file. I think this is a, an interesting use of uh, an object storage system, especially as a kind of uh, read-only data set. But then uh, I think it would actually work better if this C particular SQLite data set had indexes, because then I think it can be a bit, a fair bit smarter. But overall, I, I think it's kind of neat to hook it up this way. And it's also nice to not have to ship four gigs of data to your application server or put four gigs in Postgres. Uh, it's just the file on a server, which has upsides. Now, the thing I'm doing now, you would still want to do something similar to this if you're dealing with uh, Postgres and you're gonna do a bunch of processing. You might be pulling more entries at a time because this has been slower than I would have liked. Uh, I think it's mostly down to the VFS. I don't know uh, how fast how performant that can be but i would have hoped that it would be a little bit faster um but yeah um but no i'm partially doing it because i think it's fun uh which is one of my driving um focuses for a lot of the things i do but let's see Ooh, now it's doing failures, which is fun. What? The access key does not exist in our records? Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is, I remember this. This is a config issue. Aha. Uh -huh. I know this, this is Unix. But it's a very fair question. Why do this? Um, and uh, slight madness is probably the best answer. So now we can see that it fetched them, uploaded them, fetched them, uploaded them. Oh, that's interesting, Sergey. Uh, so, if I do, oh my, Z shell, uh, it does something to my to make my mix commands easier to type, or I don't have to type them as much. I MDG. Uh, I don't really like terse commands, uh, but I can see, like I see the appeal, but I'm not sure I would remember to use a new alias. Uh, I type pretty fast. I'm pretty comfortable doing it that way, but, whoops. All right, uh, that's, a, that's an interesting 
uh, thing in chat. Brian, I'm glad you agree that fund-driven development is the best. It is one of the best things for sure. Mm. I do find this obnoxiously slow, so let's just do <laughs> the silliest thing and just make it do a task async stream. Now, <clears throat> this is something I know uh, the Tigris folks want to do as well, which is let you easily filter things that are in a bucket, which like S3 APIs for listing things in a bucket uh, are terrible. Very, very bad. Um, but fundamentally, like, in this case, it's kind of idempotent. So if it starts over, that's not the end of the world. But we could do store offset so we don't have to retread ground so often. Just so here we just do Tigris put key. String offset. Um, get plug up here I can never remember integer the parse versus the other ones sure we get and let it crash if it fails a lot of let it crash in how I'm writing this right now at some point I will regret it uh, regret some of it and rework those parts a bit but now we can then do we can get the offset <clears throat> Right, if it completely fails to get the offset, um, we should have a default to fall back on. Um, and I'm just gonna do this lovely thing. Boom. You don't see a lot of that, but sometimes, just sometimes, I do that. All right. So here, plus name, podcasts, store offset. So this would be the offset we just did. No, this is the offset we want to start at. So let's do that. This one. No. 
There's an error. Oh no. Oh no. Tigris get is on the find or private. Did you mean get one or maybe I did? Get key. Oh, this is fetching ranges. That's nice. Um, huh. Well, right. This returns body or nil, or it can return an error if something really weird happens. That is a an odd API choice that I made. I'll deal with it. It's certainly a choice, as they say. But that means this should work. So let's just fix that warning that I'm getting very sick of seeing. Skip migrations. Now skip skipping migrations. So now it's up to offset 20. Mm. But this is interesting. Um, because it's getting slower. And this is a SQLite thing where the ordering Oh, there's something about the order in the primary key. Will it be faster if I order by the primary key? I'm curious. There's something to all of this. I remember. Sort by ID sending, which is the way it should already be. Ah. Clearly wrote something poorly. Uh, I think I'm getting a little bit tired. I do actually know how SQL works. Not that I know if, if this is the right order. I think order should be for the for these suckers. But I wouldn't put my life on it. Dun, dun, dun. This might be a ton slower as well if my assumption is wrong. So it's a ton slower. It's probably trying to sort the whole database, and that's no good because it's not actually here. So let's turn off pod fetcher for a little bit and just try to fix this query. So podcast fetch set. Um, so if we do an offset of five hundred, oh hold on, that will probably take an eternity because we were like at fifty and that took time. So. Let's do 20. This really shouldn't take super long, but there's a fun little SQLite weirdness. Um, SQLite default orders. Offset slow. Okay, it took 32 seconds. <laughs> That's brutal. For that query. It's absolutely brutal. Well, that one was quite snappy. Um, millions of records, limit, offset.
Um, indexes are not used in limit or offset. So simply adding order by index field will not help to speed up pagination. You should avoid limit offset and use where clause instead, for example. Oh. <laughs> um, you can just abuse the primary key. The mine will does have gaps in it. Hmm. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, what? Um start start the size. This is so silly. <laughs> Are there any other good things? All right. I mean, this this will probably do it for us. Just use some brutally weird subquery. Nice. Um. Podcasts where ID in select ID from podcasts where there are no indexes on these things. So it might still be slow. We'll find out if this helps. SQLite is quirky. And it makes me really appreciate Postgres sometimes. <laughs> Here from, oh, from, 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 from. Hold on, search form table where flow ID in that was not fast so i think row id is a special thing in sqlite isn't it So if we do 20, it's still kind of slow. So if we just skip the filters for now, I want to see how fast, oh, we have ordering by. I don't think we can, we should do that. Let's, let's, before we remove the filters, let's remove that. Remove all of it. How's everyone doing? Good plans for this evening or morning, depending on where you are, or for this weekend. It's very quiet in chat. I'm just going to make sure you're all awake by asking questions. So that took 
uh, well, decently long time. Let's see. Actually, they did do order by row ID. But let's skip the filters for now. Oh, you use, uh, <laughs> not sure how to pronounce your name, but uh, soup base authentication with the Phoenix app. Yeah, I guess that would be interesting. Um, so that was kind of fast, kind of super fast. This is like 50, 50,000. That took longer. A lot longer. Jeez. Huh. Expected it to take a little longer. Not that much longer. It's not like I'm saying fetch 50,000. I'm saying the offset is 50,000. Yes, yes, I realize this timed out. Um, it might be that it's using some heuristic to figure out which byte range it's going for, and that makes it slow. Thought it would be able to be quite exact, maybe it can't. <clears throat> I probably could if it was only dealing with um, if it was only dealing with um, indexes. So not, still not as fast as I would have hoped, but faster, I would say. Now we've removed the filters though, which is not great. Um, but let's, let's pretend we don't care what type of podcast we're getting and let's see how it rolls. <clears throat> and let's step up the default limit. Fifty to one hundred. And that was three point eight seconds. That was 3.7, 4 point something. Four, four, four point four. Um, I am very also surprised that it's, it's being this slow. It's almost like I want to start cracking up the network traffic and just see how many queries it's making. So 
So. <lacht> Um, so, yeah, we can try that stuff. Um, just gonna remember where I keep that database. Um, one minute. Put a copy of it in my workbench. Yes, I did. Okay. So, we can do SQL 3. <coughs> And Workbench podcast, there it is. Um, and let's see, SQLite timing. So if we select asterisk from, let's just do ID and title because they're really nice otherwise. Offset 5,000 limit. That's pretty fast. Um, But if we're doing um, if we're using this so uh, let's Let's actually just repeat the exercise here. So we load the dot dot slash. Oh, uh, where's our thing? This thing. Set of zero. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, well, repeat queries are fast. Um, just do a limit of ten because that doesn't seem to matter. In the, like fifty, five hundred. Because it's super weird that the offset would matter this much. That's super, super weird. Um, but it's the same problem that we're having. So if we're doing this, um, so this VFS probably has some performance issues. Uh, maybe there are others that are faster and do a similar thing. Uh, SQLite S3, but it was written in Go, so I had decent hopes that it would be fast. Oh, this is ideal, ideal for server. Lambda and some PHP and no, I don't think this is what I want. Um, S S three because I know this is that was not the only one who has done this. 
this one. This is done in Python. I would be shocked if this is faster, but it would be kind of fun if, if it is. Um, yeah. Um, I almost want to wire shark it or something just to see uh, what it's trying to do that's so slow. Also Python, like there's no way these are super performant unless they're just delegating to C. Um, Yes, yes, of course it's faster to have to work with the local database, but not nearly as interesting. Uh, but all right, I think we adapt our code to use the local database for now, which is dull, but will work uh, because this is a little bit too slow. Now we could switch to using Ecto and everything, but that would actually be uh, switching around a little bit more code than I care to. Let's just hard code a path for a little bit. Um, what is it? It's uh, bench podcast index feeds db. That's the one. I think we're gonna see a performance difference. Well, let's reintroduce the filters. And I think we will still see this slow down somewhat over time because I think it's partially SQL like problem, but it should be doing much better. 35. <laughs> hmm. So we can absolutely step up the number of them we fetch as well actually curious this uh, this part could be fun because we do a little bit of uploading here just timing this could be fun that is six point five seconds so 
about six milliseconds per file. I wonder how many it's doing in parallel. It's doing like 32 in parallel, probably. It's async stream. <clears throat> I wonder uh, if we can do something gnarly. I wonder if it will be faster is the fundamental thing. Because it's the timing one. I missed the same color. <clears throat> it was being fairly consistent about six seconds. So we should be able to see if we're doing let me do max concurrency. Yeah, we can try another max concurrency level. <clears throat> but it should never, I'm not sure that will help much. We could try doubling it to see if it just helps in terms of kind of buffering the load. So I think our concurrency level is. 32. <clears throat> so Thomas, uh, the idea is that it shouldn't have to download the entire SQLite file up until that point, because with offsets on a primary key, it should be able to know what byte offsets it actually needs to fetch, and then it needs to, and then it can fetch only those ranges. Uh, that's kind of the idea of how that should be able to work, but it clearly doesn't work the way I want it to, so I'm not sure. Uh, so we have 32 schedulers. Let's try doing more concurrency than uh, our schedulers. Okay, that one was faster. That could be a deviation, but no, that's faster. <laughs> We're kind of buffering the queries uh, by starting up more of them. How far can we take it? This seems to be diminishing returns. Yeah, the, wasn't faster. Um, or rather, did I not restart it? Ah, there's no wind there. Really? Or maybe a very slight one? No. But I think uh, system.schedulers online times two seems like a great way to do it. So also, since we have the database locally, we can just... This is kind of a massive database, which is kind of fun. Um, so it's 4,200,000 entries. And I think it's about time to wrap up the stream. I would like to do something where we can, um, where we might just um, do something slightly more visual. So let's take a quick, quick stab at that. So if we do this, 
then when that completes, uh, So let's make the dumbest UI to just show this in. Um. about the incoming values, just want the socket. And we can do a Phoenix subscribe. All right, uh, this one needs to have something more. Um, that for now. I could probably use live view streams here. I haven't gotten around to using it much so I just heard myself initially <laughs> so that's not um for exercise I'm, after my wife gets back from her training uh, I will probably be doing Beat Saber of all things that's been my go-to recently for for getting some exercise um, I used to be better at getting exercise, but having kids has made that trickier. I'm sorry if the, the loud clacky keyboard is very loud and clacky. Um, I should actually check that monitor wise at some point and see. Um, <clears throat> It might also be that I should speak louder. I have microphones that might bring in less of the clackiness. Um, I don't know, is this a mix browns? I don't recall. Yeah, it's browns, probably. It's a Moonlander and it says brown on the underside. But if it's too disruptive uh, at some point, I can actually bring in a quiet keyboard. I think some people like it, some people don't. Um, so can't please everyone, but I'm happy to try to make it reasonably pleasant to follow the stream. Uh, yeah. 
uh, I should also add this to the router browser. Putting anything yet. And then we have info These were the quiet ones. Mm. Also depends on how uh, mildly I type. I think it gets a lot worse if I type more aggressively. Uh, are reds quieter? I thought reds were worse. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a deep keyboard nerd I like a good keyboard but I'm not super knowledgeable about it so not getting those events which means I screwed up somewhere so if I can do that and I should get whether it blows up This should be sending a lot of messages. And I'm sending it to Podstream Pub Sub, I'm sending it to Podcast, I'm sending it as entry. Podstream Pub Sub, Podcast. I'm surprised that's not working. I don't think I've ever had a problem. Uh, yeah, but David, uh, I'm, uh, I do take input on this stuff. Um, blarg. Where did I screw this up? So the pod fetcher should be broadcasting these Phoenix pub sub messages. Unless I'd failed to save or something before I restarted it. And this is hooked up and working. Um, just gonna, yes, it runs the mount. That's good. Um, Am I forgetting something about pub sub subscribe? Oh, <laughs> uploaded zero entries. Good catch. Um, <laughs> it's been stuck at 62,9206 for a bit. Good one. Did we run out of tech podcasts? Are there only 69,000 of them? I mean, that would explain it. Uh, let's see, it's uh, public. Or, hold on, I just need to check which alias I need to talk to and I have some I shouldn't share. Um, Tigris Public is the name. Let's 
So we do pod stream. We have a ton there. Oh, <laughs> Minio's client will actually uh, page through them. That's cute. Um, but I could see doing like. Because we need to test this, right? So. Ah! I can't remove them all? That's incredibly lame. Can we do a recursive remove of the entry folder? It's irreversible. It's a dangerous operation. Very dangerous. Destroy my data, please. That was a good catch, Tim. I could have stared at that for an hour and just not gotten that nothing was actually happening. Uploading zero, uploading zero, uploading zero. So now it's moving a lot of files. Um, actually, I could have done something much simpler, much, much simpler. You know what I could have done? So I could have just removed the entry offset. <laughs> Because then it will just refetch everything. It doesn't actually check whether there's a file, which I consider mostly a good thing. All right, let's see if we can get some live view before we wrap this up. <laughs> we might, might, might want to just Um, let's see, 25 or so. Unhandled message, hold on. Entry, son of cost. Oh, it, it might be the mid compile that we're doing. No. Oh, something, I screwed something up. Oh, that one didn't need it. There. kind of fun to see all these podcasts uh, right now we're not so much seeing them as just watching them really quickly pass by <laughs> hey next stage basketball <sighs> so for the next stream, we will have a bunch of this data in the bucket. We have this thing which can help us download anything that's new or if we want more categories to be included. Um, but a good next step would be to uh, start downloading the RSS feeds and pulling episode data, which I guess We'll have to wait until next time. Watching this scroll by, it's fascinating, kind of captivating. Um, there's probably a few dirty words in there. I hope YouTube doesn't ding me for any of them. Uh, at least it's just the technology feed, which is mostly Bitcoin uh, scams and not so um, wide. All right. Um, we 
we got roughly to where I was intending. I'm pretty happy with that. And as per usual, this stream is sponsored by Tigris Data. The bucket we've been using has been theirs. Uh, as we can be fairly, I think we can be fairly certain that the slowdowns we were seeing with the SQL stuff is not so much the bucket because the uploads are very, very fast. Did you see? Um, yeah, so we had six millisecond uploads per file. Um, and actually, I, I can briefly get into that. One of the reasons that's fast is because the bucket is treated as uh, geo replicating geo distributed by default. So my uploads are going to s the closest endpoint, which is probably Stockholm. So I like the upload is probably the upload speed is essentially my latency to Stockholm. There's very little transfer because we're sending small pieces of data. Uh, and as long as it's just me who needs to fetch it, it's going to be very, very fast on the uh, coming back as well, because the data is stored primarily in Stockholm, uh, but redundantly and all that. But then if one of you would request it from say the States or Japan or Australia, it would get cached over there. Uh, so it gets, you get like the CDN effect by default. And um, <clears throat> they are, um, they have strong, oh, consistency guarantees uh, within regions, but across regions, it's a little bit more eventual. But it's kind of cool, I think. Um, and I appreciate that they pay me to work on experimenting with their stuff, uh, showing what we can do with it. And just uh, now we start building a little bit of an application on top of it. And that should be interesting. So I, unless I come up with something else that feels like a priority, I you can assume that the next stream will be mostly about pulling RSS feeds and perhaps showing some of that progress uh, while it's happening. So more of this silliness, um, I assume next week, unless something weird happens. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay curious out there.